वेलकम अगेन विल स्टार्ट विद द नेक्स्ट वीक्स क्लास फॉर करंट अफेयर्स एंड टुडे वी वुड बी टॉकिंग अबाउट सम ऑफ द लेटेस्ट टर्म्स व्हिच हैव बीन इन न्यूज एंड व्हिच आर कॉमनली हर्ड ऑफ सो वी वुड बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द वॉल्केनिक इरप्शंस व्हाई वी आर कवरिंग दिस टॉपिक लेट्स टॉक अबाउट दैट फर्स्ट एंड देन वी विल कम ऑन टू द मेजर टर्म्स दैट वी हैव पुट अप हियर इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास वी विल फोकस ऑन इंटरनेशनल कोर्ट ऑफ जस्टिस now why we have focus we, we are focusing on this topic because recently the region of pacific ring of fire now if you are familiar with the uh, regions you have the north america and the south america you have the parts of africa you have the pacific ocean and the atlantic ocean here and the pacific ocean here so the region surrounding the pacific ocean witnesses the pacific ring of fire and in that pacific ring of fire we say it's a home to numerous hot spots home to numerous earthquakes and nearly 75% of the active volcanoes of the world so we would be focusing on some of the recent volcanic eruptions that have taken place and because this region has witnessed numerous volcanic activities in the, these coming periods some of the terms related to volcanism becomes very very important so the detailed lecture on volcanism is available here now coming on to the recent eruptions there was recently in news mount mayan in philippines this is an active stratovolcano we have already discussed the types of volcanoes in this lecture now this is also a part of the lab biosphere reserve which was declared by unesco as a heritage site in 2016 now the currency in philippines is peso and it is one of the 22 active volcanoes which was recently active and you had the lahar flow which is basically the mud flow or the debris flow that was seen then you then you have mount kusatu shirane in japan this lies in the gunma prefecture that is around 93 kilometers from tokyo it is known for pyroclastic cones and the crater lakes most of the lakes here have yellow sulfur and they can be seen as yellow sulfur or yellow lakes with a sulfur layer on the top the next is mount ogong in bali the last eruption took place in 2017 and it's still ongoing the major eruptions were in 1843 1963 and 2017 one This is a large region with a deep crater that is seen and it's again a stratovolcano. The next important recent eruption was Mount Kedover in Papua, Papua New Guinea. Now this has been a dormant volcano. It has not been traced when the last eruption was seen. However, thermal eruptions or thermal phenomena were seen in 1976. since we have not seen any uh, volcanic activity of present we consider this as a dormant volcano the currency of papua new guinea is kina the people have been evacuated to the nearby islands which are known as plup plup island or rap rap or also the bam island and the beam island because of this volcanic activity tsunami warning has been issued to the nearby areas now besides this the global climatic change has also led to various other phenomena and some of the other phenomena we would discuss now now this diagram shows the pacific ring of fire so this is the pacific ocean and you have the western part of americas and the eastern part of asia and australia which ha- which are part of the pacific ring of fire and as we can see papua new guinea you have philippines then you have japan so all these recently witnessed volcanism and therefore we are covering this topic now Uh, the idea of uh, plate tectonics is the basis for the volcanic activities and the plate tectonics we talk about three types of boundaries the convergent boundaries the divergent boundaries that move apart and then you have the transform or the slip boundaries so all those are discussed in this lecture on plate tectonics so if you want to go into further detail you can refer that now coming on to some of the other events that we said Peru recently witnessed an earthquake of a magnitude of 7.1 then you have Thomas fire that took place in California now because of this Thomas fire the land was left vulnerable to mud slides because trees could not hold the soil as a result you had a major mud slide that took place in Montecito in California so these were some of the other events that were really important and as we said you have the global changes that are coming up so those become important now coming on to some of the bodies that talk about volcanic observations now definitely when you have a volcanic activity near a place where people are already residing there is a 
threat to the people again since you have airways that are open those airways are also prone to threat so we would understand how aviation warnings are issued and all those so first of all let's talk about vovo vovo is the world organization of volcanic observatories so it's a kind of observation it's a kind of association which talks about various volcanic observatories which are established throughout the world now the idea is to provide communication and cooperation between the various observatories and the institutions or the local bodies develop or maintain a kind of reference material so uh, you would have a kind of standard format that would be circulated to all departments all respective government authorities which would be in charge of taking the necessary actions and the international associations and other uh, academic institutions would be referred to if required it is also a part of the commission of international association of volcanology and the chem uh, and the chemistry of earth's interior now under the vovo you have the vovo dat vovo dat is a web based platform which is open to all for academics and teaching but the main purpose is to provide the information on the volcanic activities on a web based platform now this has been headquartered in the earth observatory of singapore in nanyang technological university it also helps the various aircrafts to check out the areas of ash clouds so that aircraft themselves do not have harm and in uh, care of the passengers as well so this undergoes along with the international civil aviation organization that is ico which is a un specialist agency now there are three alert levels that are given the first is the normal level then you have sorry the four levels the normal level that's the normal when the uh, volcano is not active and everything is normal advisory is when the volcanic activity signs have raised it's just an advisory then you have watch watch is an uh, kind of advisory where you have escalating unrest that is seen in the nearby areas and warning is a hazardous eruption conditions that are uh, forthcoming so what happened is based on this united nations geological survey which is also known as usgs adopted a nationwide alert system for its various observatories now you have the alaska observatory for the parts of alaska the california observatory for california and nevada cascades for washington oregon and idaho then you have hawaii for the island group of hawaii and yellowstone observatory for montana wyoming colorado utah new mexico and arizona area so you, united nations basically bifurcated the uh, alert system under the five observatories that it has now next we'll talk about vona vona is again very important vona is the volcano observatory notice for aviation now once you know you have a volcanic activity that is intermittent what you would do is the aviation should be informed about it so that all the necessary steps should be taken so what are given is the color code there are four color codes that are laid, laid down the first is the green green shows the volcano is in a typical condition similar to the normal that we discussed above then yellow is similar to the advisory condition under yellow you have uh, exhibiting you exhibit the signs of elevated amount of volcanic activities that can be forthcoming under orange we have the watch as we talked about previously and this orange talks about higher amount of volcanic activities and the unrest in the potential uh, and a potential eruption and finally warning equals to red where the eruption is uh, imminent with significant er eruption of volcanic ashes and no fly uh, no air space could be available for any air uh, air traffic to move so those are the four aviation color codes that are very very important now what is a kind of prototype message that is given so under mona you give a kind of prototype uh, message this includes the location where we have talked about the current code the color code let's say the current code is orange the previous code was yellow so you talk about the current code the previous code the source of information from which observatory you are picking the data the area which is vulnerable then the elevation or the height of the summit or the volcano the various remarks and the time when you would issue the next notice so notices are issued based on the requirement so if the volcanic activity is imminent the notices would come 
more quickly as compared to the normal conditions. Now, two other important terms that we would discuss are woke and laze. Woke are volcanic air pollution. Now, volcanic air pollution includes sulfur dioxide and aerosols as the main components. Now, these aerosols is basically sulfur dioxide and other volcanic gases that combine and react with oxygen, the atmospheric moisture and remain there for a period or a prolonged time and finally form the aerosols. Again, these volcanic air pollutions have significant particulate matter of the size of PM 2.5 which are considered fine, fine particles because the size is less than 2.5 micrometers or less than 120th of the width of a human hair. Now again, if you have a volcanic eruption and you are far from the vent, the only component that would be seen is an aerosol. If you are close to the volcano, you would see both sulfur dioxide and aerosol as the primary component and this is known as VOG or volcanic air pollution. The next is known as LASE. LASE is a term that is derived from lava plus haze. So lava along with haze, so LA and ZE that forms LASE. This is a kind of localized air pollution that is seen. What happens is the molten lava goes or enters the ocean body and creates a kind of uh, gas plumes which results into hazy or noxious atmosphere or basically toxic conditions. So what happens is the gas plume that here would be formed would be predominantly a mixture of hydrogen chloride, steam and small volcanic particles. Acid rain would lead to kind of uh, corrosion, corrosion in the nearby areas and the pH of this rain would be 1.5 to 3.5 that means it's highly acidic. So we say a pH of 0 to 14, 7 is neutral and below 7 you have acidic conditions and above 7 you have bases. So that's how we understand acid rain and the pH. The next is tephra. So tephras are the volcanic particles that solidify when they fall back onto the ground surface. Some of the important topics in news this week, you have the launch of Agni-5 ballistic missile, the Pradhan Mantri Surakshit Matritva Abhiyan that crossed 1 crore mark, very very important. So PMSMA scheme is very very important. Na uh, Navika Sagar Parikrama that we have also covered in the Kurukshetra recently. So this was an all women team for all India uh, for a uh, kind of global expedition on board on INS Tarini which is a kind of make in India initiative and they would be returning back in April. Right now they have entered Port Stanley in the Falkland Islands. The next is International Dam Safety Conference has been held. Now again as we said this conference is not important but what are the international parameters for dam, dam safety? Those are really very important. So make sure you have those in list and we will be covering in the next class International Court of Justice which would be our next topic for GS next week. So stay subscribed if you have any doubts you can leave those as comment below the video. We will be more than happy to resolve those. Have a very good day ahead.